Here you go. Can the people see you? Oh, <gasps> you're so little. Your collar is all they're gonna hear if you sit right there. Let's take your collar off. <gasps> you're naked. Say hi. So we're obviously not in the office today. We're at my house, we're staying home, and this video is sponsored by KEH. And before we get into this kind of exercise and challenge that we're doing today, I wanted to kind of speak a little bit candidly and open about this sponsorship. You see, earlier this year, KEH reached out and wanted to kind of pick up where we left off. I did some videos with them a couple of years ago and always had a great relationship with KEH. I've recommended them a bunch here on the channel. And we were kind of figuring out what we can do throughout 2020. So we kind of planned a few different videos wanted to really change it up a little bit and add some sort of like challenge or exercise into the videos. And the first video we were going to do was going to be this sort of like introduction to KEH where I could talk to you guys about what KEH is, what they do, and also kind of give myself a little bit of a challenge. So they have loaned me this Leica 90mm F2 Summicron that I've been shooting on my M6. And I was going to do sort of a review with that lens and also kind of talk about KEH and what they have to offer. I was going to hire some people to help me shoot the video. We were going to walk all over Chillicothe, shoot a lot of different subjects, but obviously with everything going on, the entire thing just kind of fell through and all of our plans really had to change. And I expected them to just want to kind of put this on hold. And obviously, as this being my full-time job, I was a little worried that some of the sponsors were going to have to pull away. But KEH wanted to push through and just shift gears and kind of work on this whole KEH at home initiative that they're doing. And I just want to take a second to say how awesome that is for a company like this who is supporting photographers with gear and everything, but also supporting creators like myself, I'm really, really thankful that they are willing to kind of keep this going, not only for myself, but also giving me the opportunity to make this video for you guys as well. So I just wanted to kind of speak a little bit candidly about that and be open and honest and just say thank you. So they have this whole KEH at home initiative that they're doing, and they are encouraging people to, while they're staying home, still be creative and still be, you know, making things. And for me, I shoot a lot of different things at home every single day, but I am a 35 millimeter focal length length kind of guy. So having this 90 millimeter lens, this definitely changes things. And I thought it would be a fun challenge to stay at home and shoot as much as I can with this 90 millimeter, both inside and outside. The whole family is in the backyard now, so I guess we will start there. Now I'm gonna have you, how bright is it if you open your eyes? Can you hold them open? All right. There, one, two, three. Let's talk a little bit more about this lens in depth. 90 millimeter focal length, all manual focus, as you would expect with a rangefinder lens, and considering it's a Summicron, that means it's an F2. So you have everything from F2 to F16, as well as half stops in between. In terms of the build quality, this lens feels really, really solid. It has a nice long focus throw, so going from your closest focus to infinity, it takes a while, but I actually think that's a good thing on a rangefinder lens like this on a 90 millimeter focal length. Um, I feel like if it were too short or too quick that it would be a lot easier to miss focus. So I actually prefer the longer focus throw on this as opposed to a much shorter throw on say my 35 millimeter Summicron. It's obviously a much bigger lens than a 35 millimeter Summicron, but considering it's a 90 millimeter, this is still incredibly compact, which is pretty common for rangefinder lenses. I do like the fact that the lens hood is built in and it just slides out. So if you don't need it, you can simply just push it in and it's going to save you a lot more space as well if you're taking it in and out of a camera bag. There is no focusing tab on the lens like you would expect on some other Leica lenses, but I think with the really long focus throw that's not a big deal because your tab would probably be in some kind of upright position from one end as you would have to 
basically rack focus from closest to infinity. In terms of image quality, based on just the one day of shooting around the house that I did with this lens, since that was sort of the challenge for this whole video, it's definitely a sharp lens, but it is important to keep in mind that I'm shooting everything here on HP5, a black and white film that is not the sharpest film. Um, it's plenty sharp, but there is plenty of grain there as well, which can kind of mask some of that sharpness, I think. If I were using this on, say, an M10 or any other digital M, you would probably be able to get a better idea as to what the sharpness is truly like in comparison to other lenses, but I've never been that guy that puts sharpness up at the top of my list in terms of uh, most important things in a photo, so your mileage may vary, but for me, it's plenty sharp enough. Using a 90 millimeter in general is challenging, let alone on an M. I'm so used to the 35 millimeter focal length on this camera that 90 really did kind of throw me off, but it was definitely a fun challenge. It definitely forced me to just think about things very differently in terms of how I was gonna shoot them and anticipate things as the kids were moving around. That was obviously a much bigger challenge on this lens and I missed focus pretty often, but that was all due to my error, not the lens or anything like that. That was just me not being used to using a 90 millimeter on a rangefinder and trying to focus wide open really quickly on moving subjects. That's just uh, basically a recipe for disaster. However, if it was the lens's issue, which it wasn't, but let's say it was and I had bought this lens, KEH does have a great warranty program as well, so I could have returned this no questions asked. So. I was looking a lot at The Black Trilogy by Ralph Gibson. This is my only Ralph Gibson book that I own, but I really like his way of composing things with such a tight frame. He doesn't always use a long lens, but he does use a long lens uh, fairly often, and especially in some of these photos here, you can really see that compression and how he was layering things and making compositions with such a tight frame and focusing on just shape and form and light and shadow. Really, really fascinating stuff, and I was trying to basically use this book as a source of inspiration and just trying to wrap my head around using such a long lens. We're gonna flip through some of the photos here and I can just kind of talk a little bit candidly about the photos and you know whether they worked or not. Uh, spoiler alert, a lot of them did not. <laughs> Again, a lot of just looking for lines and shape and just trying to make something interesting out of such a tight frame, but it is definitely not an easy task. Elliot on the tractor here, this is pretty much him all day, every day, if it's nice out. I really just like that he was kind of riding parallel along with the truck and the car in our neighbor's driveway. I really like this shadow from the tree in the bottom of the frame, sort of mimicking the trees up at the top of the frame off in the distance. Just trying to do something differently that I might not be able to do with my 35 as easily. Rope from the hammock there, kind of crisscrossing with the shadow from the rope on the frame itself. I shot a variety of different photos here. Honestly, I feel like if it were even tighter, then it would probably work a little bit better. So if I cropped in some, it could help. Love this photo of Molly here laying in the hammock. Just super simple and quiet, but I really, really like it. And this isn't really a characteristic of the lens, but let's just talk about Ilford HP5 and how good the shadow detail is. She was laying in broad daylight there. Uh, the sun was hitting the side of her face and you can see that the highlights, they held up great, as well as the shadow detail as well. All the way down under her chin, on her neck there, uh, everything looks super well exposed. HP5 is king. Shot some photos of Elliot inside the house as well, just some kind of like tight headshots and shooting these wide open um, at the closest focus distance. I missed focus multiple times and he moves like crazy, so I am very surprised that I was able to manage one single photo where it was in focus and a decent photo of him without just being an absolute nut. <laughs> And I love this one as well, even though it's slightly out of focus, it's more focused on the tongue, but I think that kind of works as well, just because he's sticking his tongue out at me and uh, just being a typical kid. But Nora was sitting at the dining room table and she was kind of like half sitting, half standing there at the table. And so she'd get down every once in a while. And I noticed that every time she would, she would just put one foot down and kind of press her toes into the floor. And it really reminded me of a lot of Ralph Gibson, more abstract kind of stuff. And the way that her leg kind of mirrored the legs of the chairs, I wanted to really try and shoot like a strong, high contrast silhouette kind of thing and the light from the back door was shining through and I was trying to position myself so that her leg would be right in the middle of that really strong highlight that was coming across the floor there. I think that glowing kind of look from the highlights that definitely just adds to that sort of dreamlike kind of feel but uh, I really like this one. 
I really liked these photos of Molly and Elliot in the backyard as she was holding him. I tried to place them directly on the corner of the house and using the lines from not only the siding but also the shadow kind of pointing to them. He is definitely a mama's boy so I'm always shooting photos of the two of them together and I really really liked how some of these turned out. As well as Nora just walking through the frame carrying a screen to one of the windows. Sure, why not? <laughs> Is the 90 millimeter for me? I don't think so. It is a nice kind of fun challenge and you know, a little change of pace, but I definitely appreciate a wider field of view than this. But for something like portraits on the M6, uh, the photos I shot of Elliot, I really liked. And if I were taking photos of somebody who was actually willing to sit still for more than like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 seconds, maybe it would be even better. And I think at close distances, focusing up to a meter with a 90 millimeter, that's plenty close enough for a lens like this. You're still gonna be able to get a nice tight headshot with it. If you guys are interested in picking up this lens, there's a link down below through KEH, who are obviously sponsoring this video. So big thanks to them for that, as well as a discount code that they're offering to all of my subscribers. So I really appreciate that and all of their support. This whole pandemic has really changed things up and we had to basically scrap and postpone some other plans that we had for earlier in the year. So that was really unfortunate. I was looking forward to doing a little bit more with them, but we do have plans in the future. So just stick with us and hopefully once this is all over, we can get things moving again. But if you guys are looking for any gear on the used market, I highly recommend KEH, whether it's digital or film or any other photography accessories. Uh, one of my earliest videos here on the channel was talking about where to buy gear online, and KEH was my number one pick. I don't even want to know how much money I've spent on KEH over the years, but they have a great rating system as well, so anytime you buy gear, you can see exactly what they've rated it in terms of the quality and the condition of the gear. I tend to buy things that are bargain grade, and that for me, is pretty good because what I would consider excellent they consider bargain so just kind of keep that in mind that if you see something on their website that says excellent condition it's going to be really really clean uh, much cleaner than like a regular use kind of copy like I mentioned earlier they have a great return policy as well uh, 180 day warranty so if anything goes wrong with your gear you can always rely on that as well as a 14 day return policy so no questions asked if you're shooting with something and it just isn't for you within 14 days return it completely there's no issues there and maybe you're not looking to buy gear you're just looking to sell some gear you can also do that and they actually just put up a video several days ago talking about just how simple and quick it is to sell your gear through KEH so I'm going to link that down below as well of course big thanks to KEH for sponsoring this video as well as other things we have moving forward with the channel. Cannot wait until we get back to the real world and uh, get to work on some of those plans that we have. But if you guys have any questions at all about KEH or this 90mm, please leave them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We have new videos every Monday at 8am Eastern Standard Time. But that's it for today. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.